so just finished um, a beautiful mindfulness um, meditation. It started with a, with a walk, a walking meditation, and then we went into a seated meditation, and then we laid in Shavasana. And our monk was just saying that um, all three forms of meditation um, are really powerful, especially when combined. He was talking about how the um, important part is when we first get started with meditation is to um, find a comfortable seated position where the spine is straight. Um, if you need to shift around a little bit while you're in your seated meditation, that's okay. Eventually your body through asan will get stronger and more capable of sitting in a cross-legged position and for longer periods of time. And the Dharma teaching today was about um, the three levels of um, meditation and how we start with our baseline or the or the foundation which is like the roots of the tree and by planting the seed in some nice fertile soil there's a really good chance those um those um roots are going to grow and the roots are all about being able to come into that quiet place where you recognize that um the mind and um what i'm finding with with buddhism is the mind they refer to the heart space as being the mind is where we're feeling the thoughts that are coming in. So it's to be aware that we have our internal feelings and our external thoughts. And so the inner thought and the outer thoughts are the inner and outer mind. Now with the inner and outer mind, what happens is um, with the outer mind, um, I'm connecting to all my senses and they consider the mind to be the sixth sense. And so the things I'm seeing, hearing, the food I'm tasting, the sensations of feeling uh, on my skin, um, that which I can smell if I didn't say it, and of course, um, what I can hear. So these are the senses and then the mind being the sixth sense. So what happens is most of us are so distracted living outside of ourselves um, and listening to the outside mind that we often forget to listen to the inside mind and the outside mind distract us distracts us keeps us really busy keeps us in an illusion uh, keeps us living outside of ourselves and wanting and needing and um, shopping drinking gambling <laughs> sex uh, over exercising overdoing every and anything I could be really addicted even to helping people um, so all of these things and anything, anything that you feel like you have to do and if I took it away from you, you'd have a hard time dealing with life without it. it means that there might be like a really heavy use or an addiction to it. So you know that I'm a 12 step um, program person for about 24, almost 25 years now. And, um, and I knew better a long time ago that I was living outside of myself, blaming, shaming, guilting, uh, everybody else. But what I also realized is that those deadly sins are all a combination of my fears and if I wasn't afraid of not having enough then I might not be envious if I wasn't afraid of not getting my share then I probably wouldn't be greedy or jealous if I wasn't afraid I probably wouldn't um, feel like I need to protect myself and become angry or rageful these are all just behaviors all of these deadly sins are all just behaviors to help me cope with my fear my sadness but mostly just my fear of not having enough being abandoned um, basically those are the things you know the main things at least for me they are and the thing is is that when I stop living at lis listening and living with my outside mind and I start to go inward then I start to focus on how I'm feeling and what's going on inside of me and as I'm focusing on what's going inside of me, going on inside of me, I can then um, understand better how I'm feeling. And uh, I can understand where the feelings are sitting in my body. And then I can start to ask them why and from what experiences, you know, does one person experience um, fear, anger, sadness, judgment, uh, and another person for the same situation or conditions would not. And it's all based on, you know, a lot of my history or your history for you in that case. But for me, let's concentrate on, on me because I can only speak for myself. Um, so what ends up happening is I need to look at those things 
And then I have to ask myself, am I afraid that my needs aren't going to be met somewhere? Am I afraid I'm going to be abandoned? Um, am I afraid I'm not going to have enough food, clothing, shelter? Uh, what is it I'm so afraid of? Because in the end, you could pr pretty much take just about everything out of my life and I'm going to be okay. People are not going to let me go hungry. I'm not ever going to be clothesless, clothesless or homeless. And you know, when I start looking at life this way and I stop worrying about the fancy watch, the fancy shoes, the nice jewelry, the cars, the houses, the all of these things, and I just let myself be exactly where I'm at, then I can really reduce all of the stress in my life and inside of me. So anyhow, as I come to this place of focusing on my internal self, I learn to focus and concentrate. And as I'm learning to focus and concentrate, then all of a sudden wisdom starts to set in. And um, the wisdom is what's going to help me to problem solve and be um, a person who takes action, proactive, instead of being a reactor, uh, because I am a really big reactor. Uh, you know, because uh, most of my life has been spent reacting to um, interactions with other people, places, and things. These are all called conditions, the conditions of things going on. And um, it has not brought me any closer to peace, I'll tell you. If anything, it has um, distracted me more and more, and as it distracts me, I end up being more and more um, angry and resentful and rageful to a place where I just burnt my world down. I've been talking about that a lot on my journey because I really want um, to be very honest about um, how I have burnt my world down and um, how I'm trying to rebuild it. And um, really, all of those other people that I'm so angry with, it's really because I love them so much or I've given so much time, energy, and effort to those relationships. And sometimes things just never change. And, you know, I just really wanted... I wanted everybody to find a happier, more energetic, joyful place within themselves, um, really, so we could have better relationships. And by having those better relationships, what I'm really trying to tell you is I wanted those things to change so I could also feel safer. And by feeling safer, then um, that little scared girl inside of me um, could then uh, settle down and ground herself. But the thing is, is that now I just want people to be happy for themselves, not for me. Because that little scared spot inside of me is dissipating every day, all the time. And um, I really don't have anything to fear. I'm a pretty joyful, pure soul, just like the rest of you. And um, with all this inner work and this concentration and connection, I am automatically gaining the wisdom. And that's what our Buddhist monk was talking about in our Dharma teaching today. He was saying that... You know, the only thing that I really need to work at is uh, sitting quietly or perhaps I'm doing a walking meditation, I'm doing shavasana, maybe I'm gardening. There's so many ways you could be cooking. These could, anything could be turned into a meditation. Uh, so if your practice or your motivation is to calm the mind and come into the moment and um, be with the... Uh, be at one with the things you're doing, that is a form of meditation. If you're sitting quiet and you need to focus on the breathing, the breath coming in and out, or maybe you're focusing on a mantra, uh, or maybe you're focusing actually with your eyes open on an object so that you can um, strengthen your ability to come into that one-pointedness connection, uh, then you're going to also learn how to bring your awareness into one spot and concentrate. And as you're learning to do that, then your focus grows so that when a problem arises, you automatically have a brain training of how to um, come inside, uh, with inside self, focus on uh, the issue. Well, for, first of all, focus on how you feel. Then you focus on the issue and um, without going into the story, the story is the thing that happened. That's the, ca that's the causes and that's the conditions. And so if you can just go into your feelings, then you automatically go into your wisdom and your wisdom will automatically tell you how to handle the issue so that you can handle your um, situations that you're going through with others in a more peaceful, positive way without blowing things up. And uh, that's the whole practice, really, of um, 
of being able to come into that mindfulness. It's about being able to dissipate all that stress and depression and anxiety and negativity so that uh, we can all have a better chance at finding some kind of happiness or contentment in life.